Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Beruchim Abayim, everybody. Today, Tuesday, the 21st day of Adar 1, the 22nd day of February 2022. Today's class, graciously sponsored by Mr. Isaac Sabdeye and family, Le'ailu Nishmat, his beloved mother, Yvette Sasson, the Sabdeye, Bat Clotilde, and Isaac Alea Shalom. Additionally, today's class, graciously sponsored by Mr. Albert Dweck and family for the refuah shelema of Dr. Eli Ftiha Eliyahu Ben Rahel. Additionally, today's class dedicated for the refuah shelema of Ava Shlomit Bat Ilana Esther and Hannah Haya Bat Sarah Rivka. And additionally, today's class dedicated for the refuah shelema of Ishaq Ben Esther by the Nahon brothers. Iratzon that the Neshama that we mentioned in the beginning has an Aliyah in Gan Eden, and those Holim that we mentioned have a Refuah Shelema among the Holim of Am Israel. Amen. Amen. Today, we are going to be talking a bit about the life of a great Sadiq, which, interesting enough, he is found interesting in the Hokle Israel. We know, if you look at the Hokle Israel, that we learn daily with beautiful lessons, we come across many different aspects of Torah learning. But if you look at the Hokle Israel, in the beginning of the Hokle Israel, there are an extra curriculum uh, reading, starting from something by the Hida HaKadosh, then it continues with the Orhot Haim by the Baal Turim. Then you have, I believe, the letter of the Nachmanides, they get it, Ha Ramban, and then you have the special write ups by the great Noam Elimelech. Some of you may have heard of him, the Noam Elimelech of Lijensk, who was the, a, a great Sadiq who lived in the 1700s. He was around, I would like to say, maybe a few years after the Baal Shem Tov, and he was known for being a great Sadiq. And one of the most famous books that he wrote is called the Noam Elimelech. Now, this great rabbi, the Noam Elimelech, also wrote a small booklet. A small booklet. It's called Tzetel Katan. It's found in the Hokle Israel. If you open up any of the red version, Hebrew only, Hokle Israel, you're going to see exactly what he wrote. And therefore, I think that as we come across throughout the Jewish calendar, many Sadiqim that we feel a certain level of connection with, so we try to learn some of their holy writings because it's written in the holy books that when it comes to the day of the Yorzai, or Askara of a Sadiq, and you read something that they wrote, suddenly we have a new advocate in Shaman. And believe me, to have the Noam Elimelech in your corner, you are in the major leagues of protection. So we're going to read some of his holy writings. You know, this is a, a, a exercise uh, that in many communities, by the way, I know this for a fact, they read this every day. That's why they have it at the beginning of the Hokle Israel. You know, Hokle Israel is something that is Davara Shaveh Lechol Nefesh. It's something suitable for everyone. You have something from the Humash, Nevi'im, Ketubim, Mishnah, Gemara, Zohar, Alakha, Musar. Yani, you got a full package. Okay? It's like a full package. There is no uh, extra requires once you cover yourself that. So let's read at least maybe the highlights of some of these uh, messages because at the end of the day, these messages are not uh, Hiddushim. They are not inventions. These are items that the Noam Elimelech writes and it says that they need to be part of our life. So it says, in every moment that you are not learning Torah, okay, that you are not learning Torah, you're sitting in your room or you're laying down in your bed and you cannot sleep, 
it says, start thinking about a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Not simple. Sometimes when a person lays down in bed, the day goes by or situations go by. So it says here, when you are resting, it says, think about the essence of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. How a Kadosh Baruch Hu guides and holds the person's hand throughout the day. And many times, things happen above and beyond, and beyond the natural way of life. And it says that a person should be able, obviously this doesn't happen overnight, but it says the person should develop a great level of connection and bonding to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And it says that at that moment, even though you're not doing anything, you are laying down in your bed, but you're thinking about the essence of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, you are fulfilling a misvat aseh mide oraita, a positive commandment of the Torah. Which positive commandment? Of thinking about Hashem. Beautiful. Number two, something that we discuss in the Gemara class, Masechet Berachot, on Sunday, the Shema. Remember that we learn how important it is to read the Shema properly. He talks about the Kavana that a person needs to have in the first Pasuk of the Shema. Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. And we learn that it's imperative that a person separates between the words, that the words should not be touching with each other, even when you're reading, especially words, that one word finishes with one letter, and the next word begins with the same letter. For example, Bechol Lebabecha, Aesev Besadecha. Those are some of the examples that the Gemara brought down. But it says also, that in the Pasuk of Keriyat Shema, number one, there is a concept of Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem means to sanctify God's name. Throughout history, millions probably of our forefathers, they gave their life al Kiddush Hashem. We discussed last week, remember the Inquisition, for example, right? And what was uh, one of the options given to the Yehudim back then? You convert to Christianity or else. That else means what? Execute. Burning them alive, that for them. Now, how did thousands of Yehudim walk through the gas chambers? How thousands of Yehudim walked through the death? It wasn't a, a, a round trip ticket. People gave their life al Kiddush Hashem. It's not easy. It's not an easy nizayon. That's the reason why during the time of the Inquisition as well, there were people who accepted Hasve Shalom, Christianity externally, externally for the Goim to see, but internally they were Yehudim. The problem was that if they caught them, Hasve Shalom, the, the suffering was unbearable. This is something that happened during the Inquisition. And probably the same thing with the pogroms in Europe, 1648, 1649, or, or in the Alilat Dam in Syria, the blood libels, all these unfortunate situations that happens to the person's life. Number three, it says also that when a person eats, and when the person does different types of uh, misvot, it says, although there is a, some type of physical benefit uh, and pleasure, but nevertheless remember that our mission in life is that even when we eat, there is an essence of kedusha. That's why we say berachot before and after. Besides checking that the food is kasher, I'm not even talking about that topic. Baruch Hashem, I believe if you are here listening to Torah classes and coming every day to pray, or you watch I Torah daily, that kasher is not an issue, right? Obviously. But 
Berachot before and after, and remember what we learned last week from the Sha'are Kedusha, that the person needs to control the food. Not that the food controls the person. You know what that means? Hazak Baruch. You decide when to eat. Obviously, some of us are Zerizim, Magdimim, you know. We have agility and we want to expedite the food. But according to the Sha'are Kedusha, he says, you be in control. You decide when to start eating. You decide how much you eat. And it says the Ra'abad, uh, the famous Ra'abad, who was famous for writing commentaries about the writings of the Rambam, that a person, that I saw this in the Lekah Tov a while back, and it says that a person that is able to control his desire for eating for one minute, it's like you fasted that day. <clears throat> Occasionally I do this. I also have my yes and that. What do you think? I'm immune. I'm not immune. Today the yes and that came to see me at 3.30 in the morning. It was 3.30. We had a struggle. I got up. I made a tila. I said, you know what? Let me sit down. Let me do. Let me read. Let me prepare myself. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Then at 4.15, I said, you know what? I look at the clock. The clock looked back to me. 4.15, it's not very hot. And I'll go back to sleep for half an hour. That half an hour became an hour and a half. Thank God I made it to the 8 o'clock minute. I'm happy. I'm happy. I wasn't happy. But I'm happy that I made it. Thank God. But you see how the Yisra gets you? He even becomes a sadiq who tells you, no, you have to take care of yourself. You work very hard. Go sleep half an hour and make sure to wake you up. You know, but that's how the Yeserara works. So, going back to the Benu Elimelech Milijes, the Noah Elimelech, it says that when a person exercises self-control concerning food, that's also a person is sanctifying himself in front of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Another concept that is famous uh, in many circles is the concept of reciting Leshem Yehud. In many Sidurim, I would like to say most Sidurim, before Misvot, you see a statement that says, Leshem Yehud Kutcha Berichuk Shinte. You find this, for example, Hareni Mitpalel Tefilat Shahari, Tefilat Minha, Tefilat Arvi. Look in the Sidurim, you have it. What's the meaning of this sentence? It says, Leshem Yehud, I'm here by unifying myself to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. So basically, you know what it means in plain English? Now I'm going to connect with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Beautiful, right? Like somebody told me in the Shidduch, how is it going? It says there is no connection. So he said, do you need a Wi-Fi uh, password? So in the Mitzvot, there is a potential connection with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. And it says, and try to recite this as much as many times as you can before the performance of the mitzvot. Another one, he says, self-improvement. Self-improvement is not a new topic. It's a topic that we have discussed this through years, through the years. We learn the importance of a person not getting stuck in their old ways or in their own uh, wrong behavior patterns. So it says, when suddenly starts awakening, awakening inside of your life some of the negative uh, character traits that a person may have. For example, akshanut, stubbornness, or arrogance, laziness, or doing nothing. Similar, it says that there is a segula. There is a secula of self-control at not expanding these negative traits. And we know that like, there are negative traits, there are good traits. For example, uh, the antidote of gaava, arrogance or holiness, is anava, humility. 
the antidote of atzlanut, which is laziness, is what? Zerizut, agility. This, the opposite of sadness or feeling down is simha. So we have a positive and a negative. So he brings an interesting segula. Now, if you're asking me how the following statement helps to remove the negative character traits, I don't believe that I have a good answer. I can give you an, an answer that's popping up in my mind at this moment, and maybe you like it. So it says, say this, the following, seven words. Hakena'ani, ahiti, ha'emori, be'aperizi, ahivi, be'ibusi, be'agirgashi. These words, you say them every day of your life. Where? In the Baibarech David, right here. Now, why Rabbeinu Elimelech says that saying these seven words can reverse negative traits? I believe, with Hashem's help, thanks to you, obviously, I have the answer. Because these seven words were the seven nations that Hashem evicted from Eres Israel. So when Am Israel came to the land of Israel, remember Yoshua bin Nun had to wage seven years of war, plus seven years of separation of the land, division of the land, and he needed to defeat 31 kingdoms. But the master kingdoms were these seven. So you know what I understand, what the Noam Elimelech is saying? That each one of these kingdoms represented negative traits <laughs> You know, different nations have different symbols and different character traits. For example, Hamabdil. So it seems from the Noam Elimelech that when the person says these words, we may be invoking heavenly help. And how do I know invoking heavenly help? Because every one of them has a Shem's name hidden in the name of the nation. Listen to this. Ha kena'ani, hey yod. Ha hiti, hey yod. Yod ke, Hashem's name. Okay? So maybe this is the reason why the Noam Elimelech says that when a person says these seven words, like Hashem evicted these negative nations that they were arch enemies of the Jewish people, not physically, but spiritually. That was the problem with these nations, okay? So we get rid of these negative traits as well. I think it's a great Hidush by the Noam Elimelech. You agree? Yes, sir. Chazak And it says, you have guaranteed return. If he says it, better than FDIC insured. Because FDIC is limited to 150 down. <laughs> <laughs> this is to Shemaim. The sky is the limit. Now, one more he says. It says, Baruch, Atta Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sheakol Niyah V'Baruch. One more added, he says, Train yourself to be careful with your eyes. Shemira Ta'inan. We know this. Miami has a lot of misyonot in this matter. Don't go look for them. Just take my word for it. Okay? And it says that if, if, if a person suddenly finds himself in this type of misayon with the eyes, yetzayer lefanav shem amonai. It says, imagine in your mind Hashem's name. Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yod. The Benishai also speaks about this topic, and it says that the moment that a person uh, imagines or writes up virtually Hashem's name, that it's like a reset button to the Neshama, and that gives the person a certain level of self-control. Another one, he says, if God forbid, if God forbid a person has an inappropriate thought, the previous one 
was looking at something that's not allowed. The next one is the thought is in the brain of the person. It says, let say a few times, benishmarta mikol davar ra. You're going to protect yourself about any negative thing. And this refers the concept of inappropriate uh, thoughts, etc. Another one, it says, talking to people. It says, the less you talk, the better. And if you're going to talk, you know what it says? Utilize a sifter of 13 layers. Can you imagine? The problem is that we talk without a filter. That's a challenge. It says you're going to use a filter that has 13 layers of filter. So what do you, you, know, what does that, what do you understand on that? That by the time we filter our speech, only the minimum and good things will come out because every layer is thinner. It's like you sift flour, right? When you sift flour, the lacha is clear. You cannot use a sifter, right, that has a big size holes because you're not sifting anything. What do you have to use? The micro mesh, yani 0003, that enables the flowers to go through, but nothing else. If there is anything else but flower, we get stuck in that uh, filter. So it says, because when you talk, when we talk, obviously, a lot of things could happen. Maybe not everything that we say is true, or maybe we see we, we spread a gossip or slander or, or, or even embarrassing a person just in conversation. And it says, train yourself to activate a rabbinical suggestion. Train yourself to say, I don't know. Not so easy. Okay? Some of us may have the easy time to say, I don't know, but some of us may not. But it says, and even when people start talking to you, which are not careful, they just talk because it's cheap or free. They don't know that talk is very expensive. I'm not saying expensive in the financial aspect in the spiritual consequence of speech. It says, Yashmit et atzmo mehem bekol koho. Avoid problematic people. Avoid people that they don't, eh, 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 they are not careful in what we are learning now. Ah, what if you can't? And it says, it's impossible, it's your cousin, it's your brother. You're gonna divorce yourself from your brother, God forbid. Keep the conversation short and don't dwell on it. Another one. Train yourself to recite in the morning. Which I believe everybody does this, including children, women, and men, obviously. Also, it says, important to make netilati daim as soon as you wake up, to remove the impurity that permeates the person's hands due to sleeping. Another one, it says, he writes and it says to do certain prayers, but especially to review this handful uh, booklet and also remember the destruction of the Beta Mikdash and review the learning that you do on a regular basis. Another concept, it says, Try to pray in a proper way. Try to find a good place where to pray in the morning and in the evening and avoid getting distracted while you are praying. What kind of distraction, I ask you a question, existed in the year 1750? What was the distraction in the seven, besides the mind? in the 1750s. The mind always existed. There are no cell phones, no even kosher cell phones, no TV. There was nothing. You know what was the distraction in those days? 
No, wait, wait, wait. Let me find it. I just saw it. No, 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 no. In the prayer, it says, Leistakel basedadim. You are praying and you're looking around. You're looking at everybody. Uve hazarat ashaat. And with the hazan, those the shaliyah sibur hazarat that we learned the other day, he says, Ye'ayen basidur. Follow the prayer from the prayer book. I'm not sure how many of us do this. La anot amen al kol abiracha and make sure to answer amen. And when it comes also to the listening of the Sefer Torah, listen and follow like you follow with your eyes the Megillah, you follow the words of the Sefer Torah. So how your conduct should be in the synagogue, Ya'ase et atzmo ke'ilem babet akneset, afilu kolem tefila. It says, make yourself deaf and mute in the synagogue. It's not so easy. It's not so easy. Uh, and no one, I think, is immune. I think we all have this Nisayon, that when Tefillah finishes, we start talking, and before Tefillah begins, we start talking. According to what he's saying, he says, you come to pray, your prayer should be the main focus from the moment you come to the synagogue till the moment that you leave the synagogue. Definitely, it's a wake-up call. It's an eye-opener, that what he's saying, which again, uh, uh, this is something based in the halakha. It's not an invention. Uh, we discussed this in the past. I told you maybe once, that once I went to speak to somebody in the shul, and this fellow had a sign that says, don't talk to me during prayers. I don't talk at the synagogue. Wait for me outside in the parking lot or in the lobby if you need to talk to me. He had it already printed. Okay? Beautiful concept. Another one. It says, be honest with yourself and seek spiritual help when the need arises. If it's in your conduct, if it's in your mind, or if it's in an advice that must be based on the Sefer Torah, on the Mehila, on the ways of the Torah, and it says that it's beneficial for the person to seek spiritual assistance when required. Another concept, he says, the concept of netilat yadaim before eating bread. Another concept, he says, that we discussed this not long ago, and also when a person comes out of the bathroom, he says, also both netilot are very, very important. Why? Because, number one, the netila when a person comes out of the restroom, it's to remove the impurity. And if the hands are not purified halachically, even though you wash them with water and soap, but if you did not do netila, this is the lingering of a spiritual aura, so to speak, that comes from the bathroom, the way with this goes back uh, from the Avon of Baal Peor. And netila tiadaim, before eating, is obviously to eat with tahara, to eat with holiness and purity. Number 17, he says, the person was created with one goal in mind. Besides the spiritual goal of marriage, children, misvot and ma'asim tovim, but it says, ha'adam nivra ba'olam leshaber et ha'teva. Says the person was created with deficiencies for us to improve ourselves. Lachen, and therefore it says, try to work on it as soon as you can. The younger, the better. But it's never too late. But how do we reverse a negative character trait? Let's say a person, I'm sharing with you this, the example that he brings. A person that was born with stubbornness. How we reverse that? What do you do? 
So it says, you must go into training mode. <laughs> training mode, 40 days challenge. That's what it says. It says, Arba'im yom, retufim. And work on that aspect. For 40 days, I will avoid acting in a stubborn manner. Because stubbornness, like it or not, comes from ga'ava, from holiness. What akshanut means? My way or the highway? I'm right, you're wrong. I'm innocent, you're guilty. That's what akshanut means. I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong. Hazak Thank you. You're never wrong? Okay. <laughs> Good to know that. Maybe you want to give the class tomorrow? Anyways, but it says in Omeli Melech, that when a person, for example, another example he says, a person that is lazy, atzlanut, right? It says, train yourself to wake up earlier than usual for 40 days and be diligent and quick when it comes to waking up, when it comes to getting dressed, when it comes to even go to the bathroom, walk to the synagogue fast. In other words, do things, including, he says, when you pray, move your body. Move your body. Which the Noam Elimelech writes in the actual book, Noam Elimelech, that many times the movement of the body when a person prays or a person learns is guided from Shammai. That a person suddenly gets this it or a root. And it says, a what misva, so to speak, you fulfill when you move during your prayers? Kal asmotai tomarna ashem mi chamocha. All my body parts, all my bones will praise Akadosh Baruch Hu. And to say the Berachot properly and learn how to pray as well into reading a proper way and eventually the person by training themselves in these matters 40 days will reset the button of the person it is not how do i say this an automatic reaction but as the pele yoes writes hergel naasa teva once you start training it becomes the nature of the person and therefore it says review this booklet often and this way you will become familiar from many of the messages that we gave today and it says and once Shamayim sees that a person is taking the first baby step in recognizing the need to change then the person will have siyata dishmaya from Shamayim is actually guaranteed from the Gemara. If a person wants to become better, Shamayim will help you. And the person, every day, one more step, one more step, one more day, one more day, one more day, eventually the person will be able to bend the negative traits that we have Add to man until we send them into retirement. Meaning to say that suddenly the deficiencies in our personality suddenly will start subsiding. And then the good things come up. Because once you once the negative leaves, then the good thing comes up. And it has a as a domino effect. If it's in the personal behavior of the person or even in marriage. How many times you hear in marriage that husband and wife have always arguments? And don't bring me philosophical or spiritual arguments. They just argue. Why? There are many times a lot of arguments at home. It's Akshanut. Stubbornness. No one is willing to give in. Why should I give in to her? I'm paying all the bills. That's what the husband says. And she says, 
Who was he when he got married? Hundred percent. So when both of them has the shalom, God forbid, think this way, yeah. you think that anyone is going to give in? But if we become who the Noam Elimelech is telling us that we need to develop the potential that Kadosh Baruch Hu gives us, and we start working on it, you'll see miracles. Be'ezet Hashem. Very beautiful. Very powerful. <coughs> Yesterday he said, eat the burnt food that the wife cooks, and it's burnt, eat it. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what he says. Eat the burnt food, doesn't matter. Okay. Huh? You need the filters. You need 13 layer filter. You know, your air conditioning has a filter, right? What happens if you don't change it often? It's clogged. It's clogged. And what happens when it's clogged? It breaks. It breaks the machine. Then you got to call the technician. Right. Then you got to pay the service. Right. So we're giving you a formula that by doing preventive maintenance, mm -hmm. you not need to call the service. It's good. The best. Same thing in marriage. Same thing at home. Same thing in the way that we communicate and we talk. Okay, I think that I covered a lot of beautiful points today. So today I'm going to do something different. Today I'm going to let you go now. Because I have to start the Spanish class soon. You want me to go further? Okay, beautiful. I'm okay. I got what to say. Thank you. You know, there was a, 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 a something written by the Noam Elimelech. I thought that I was going to see it here. A special prayer that the Noam Elimelech wrote, and I was surprised that I did not see it here. He wrote a prayer. It's not here. It's not here. But I don't want to disconnect my cell phone to get it. Uh, you have a cell phone on? Yeah. Can I use it? And how do I go to the websites? Uh, it's a beautiful prayer. You're going to love it because if we follow Mehila, 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 right here. If we follow right here, if we follow the sentence that I'm going to read now, our life will be greater at all levels. Let me just find it. Ah, beautiful. Just give me a moment. This is a very lengthy prayer. Right here. Aha. It's a beautiful song, actually. But I'm not going to sing it today. So it says, the Noam Elimelech, let me give you the brief introduction. This is a prayer for all matters of life, but especially interpersonal relationships. So it says, Hashem, save me from envy and make sure that I will not be jealous of others as well. And it says, Tembeli Beno, on the contrary, place into our heart, Shenire Kolehad, Maalat Habereno, Belo Hesronam, that we see the appreciation for the goodness of our fellow men and not the faults that they have. Positive instead of negative. And we should speak to our fellow friend with civility and gentleness 
what's approved according to your standards. In other words, there are standards that we activate in our life. Those are man-made standards. But the standards of Akadosh Baruch Hu are different. And that's why the Pasuk says, Be'item neki'im me'ashem u'me'israel. Another Pasuk says, Be'asita hayashar be'hatov be'ane Hashem elokecha. You got to do right what's in front of God's eyes. Not enough just to get by by the human. And that's what it says. Be'arasui lefanecha. It says what's acceptable in front of you. And not let not the hatred arise in our one, on our one of our friends, God forbid, and strengthen our bondings and may all of our actions, they bring pleasure to you. And this is our main purpose and the main intention that we have in our life. This is a short version of a lengthy version of a prayer uh, composed by the great Noam Elimelech, the great Rabbeinu Elimelech of Lijensk, the brother of Rabbeinu Zusha. Remember the two holy brothers, Rabbeinu Zusha and Rabbeinu Elimelech? Yeah. If you don't know them, one day we'll talk about them. They were called Ahim uh, Kedoshim. They were the holy brothers. They impose upon themselves Galut. They impose upon themselves exile. What does it mean exile? They travel from place to place to atone for their shortcomings and to expedite Mashiach's arrival. This is one of the many things that these two great tzaddikim uh, did. That they live, as I told you, the Noam Elimelech was born in 1717 and passed away 1787. Yeah, and he lived 70 years, exactly. Exactly 70 years, and but he created a revolution in the world till today. His writings are followed by thousands because he, he doesn't really discusses halakha matters, but he brings matters of Hirat Shamaim and Avodat Hashem, which is part of our goal. What's our goal here? To serve God and to <coughs> become better Yehudi. Those are most of the topics that he discusses among many other very deep Kabbalistic concepts. But for today, I think that we covered the great Settle Katan from the great Noam Elimelech. We say Tiskela Mizvot to all the generous sponsors of today's classes for the itorah.com uh, Spanish crowd. Be'ezat Hashem. Nos vemos en 45 minutos via itorah.com que tengan todos muy buenos días. Have a great day, everybody. Shavuot Atov, Kumeborach, Baruch.